So, thank you. So, good morning. Let me let me share my screen. Uh, well, we will talk about uh, youth participation for the empower empowerment of civil society today. So, I think also it will be a chance to exchange some ideas maybe here and even some experiences. Uh, I think that this this is important. I don't know if you can see my screen. You can see my screen, great. Uh, so I think that it is important to share some uh, experiences uh, maybe uh, here about uh, participation because the first thing that I will ask is what for you is participation? And here, well, I'll say that if if you can open your also your microphone and uh, and talk, it would be better just to exchange some ideas. If you don't, you can write in the in the chat. But but please tell tell me uh, tell all the group about participation. What do you think is participation? And let me ask another question. For you, participation is um, the act that you go and uh, vote, for example, uh, in the elections only, or it's something broader, or is is not that? What exactly is participation for you? And I I ask you, please, anyone. Yes, I can see in the chat. Participation is the way we are active in democracy. Uh, is our way to use the freedom. Uh, yes, well, participation is connected with freedom, of course. Uh, is 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 a way of activation. Uh, is actually something broader. Participation is to take part in something in common with others. Okay, yes, yes, of course, of course, we are all together. We participate, so it's something uh broader any other ideas participation should not be restricted just to voting once uh, in four years in my opinion yes it's not well this is the this is uh, uh, something uh that we will discuss it's not only that well it, it is participation but it's not only that Participation has different forms, and we will see some of them today. So yes, it's not only this one. If we are active citizens, we will participate in also in different kinds of uh, uh, act, act, actions, uh, activities, what else? It means organizing with other people with the goal of improving our society. Yes, yes. This is the main goal, uh, to, to change something and improve our society. Yeah, very nice ideas. Okay, about participation. If anything uh, comes to your mind, just uh, you you can uh, say, well, participation actually is connected with active en engagement. Uh, vivid and energetic forms and types of engagement, uh, raising awareness, voting, volunteerism, dialogue. Yes, all of these. Uh, exchange ideas and activism. Yes, yes, yes. It's all of this, and we will talk about volunteerism also um, and participation in different activities. Uh, for example, and, and exchange ideas. Participation is being active in our community, volunteering, yes, uh, doing good without wanting something in return. Yes, of course, you, you offer this to the society. You participate because you feel uh, um, you feel you, you you are not typically a citizen. You feel that you are a citizen that uh, could offer something more to the society. So uh, you participate because you believe that uh, with this in this way you can uh, offer your contribution along with the, all the other citizens to the society. So yes, uh, participation is actually leads to active engagement so this is this is something very important we will see um how this is going to to be done in traditional and alternative forms um so first of all political participation is active engagement with the aim of making a specific policy change you said that you said that 
we participate because we want to offer something uh, new. Uh, we want to make a difference, something different. We want to change something to, to implement a different policy, for example. So exactly this is this policy change, let's say. Uh, and political participation takes also several forms and is also organized in several uh, different ways. We will see these ways. So we have the social participation in groups and the individual participation what, because we want to uh, participate, and ex participate and express ourselves. So if we want to focus on active participation, then we, we can see that here we have critical citizens, citizens who uh, actually have these, these um, skills that can uh, be critical about what is in, uh, happen what's happening, about the policies which are implementing uh, implemented. And so they are critical. They, they, uh, uh, they can discuss all these things. They, they can find also the appropriate knowledge. Uh, they, they will search about this. They will express themselves and their opinion uh, directly and in a creative way. Um, also, there are uh, paths which are non-institutional. It's not only about participating in political parties and not only participate, um, participating in uh, trade unions, for example, but here different paths, uh, non-institutional, and we will see some of them. And also it's about the targeting uh, uh, diverse uh, actors. We will see how this happens. So how could we increase participation? And I ask you, how do you believe that we can increase participation? So for example, um, by participating in trade unions more, because we see this, that there is a decline these last decades in participating in trade unions and in uh, political parties, for example. So how we can increase participation? Are there any other ways, NGOs, for example, or something else? You, you. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I, I would like you to express your opinion here, if you like. Any opinions? Let me check. Yes, A rising awareness, social bonding. Uh, NGOs, volunteerism, advocacy, yes, yes, all of these. Uh, yes, any other opinions? We'll see some of them, some of these uh, ways. Sharing good practices and furnishing concrete examples, campaigning. Uh, okay. So sharing good practices, actually, it means that we, we discuss, there is a debate, there is uh, uh, actually there are activities uh, where you can ex express yourself and explain your opinion. Um, yes, yes, okay, if, if you, can, you can write in the chat, no problem. Um, methods, helping the others to be motivated, agendas, meetings, conversations. Yes, exactly, all of this. All of this, yes, of course. Um, Erasmus Plus youth participation activities, of course. Uh, Erasmus Plus is is the the uh, way. It's a tool. It's a program that will increase that increases actually uh, active uh, participation uh, and all of uh, these activities. So you said all of these examples and. Uh, Then this leads to a youth participation. So what is youth participation? Um, first of all, youth participation is, is very, very important, let's say, for the development of a thriving and uh, inclusive uh, society. Because you know that uh, young people are actually the, the future of, of uh, the communities and uh, they have uh, a unique perspective 
on issues which, which actually affects uh, affect them and their peers. Uh, so engaging uh, youth in decision-making processes um, and uh, providing opportunities for them to take an active role, as you said also, uh, in, in, in actually shaping their future is essential for creating a more just and equitable uh, society. So if, uh, if we could say that uh, uh, this, this is actually a, um, uh, a way to enhance a sense of ownership and responsibility among young people. So there are a lot of reasons why youth participation is important. First, firstly, uh, it's this, the, the, the creation of uh, this sense of ownership and responsibility. When young people are involved in decision-making processes, they feel more um, uh, invested in, 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 in the outcome and uh, they, they are more likely to take action and uh, ensure its success. So this can lead to a greater, a greater uh, sense of uh, pride and of connection um, with, uh, with their communities and, of course, of uh, civic engagement. Um, participation is also very important in, in creating more diverse and representative uh, decision-making bodies. So young people uh, uh, bring unique perspectives and experiences to the table uh, that may not be represented by older uh, generations. So by including uh, the young people uh, in decision-making processes, we can ensure that these policies and these programs are more inclusive and they are more um, responsive to the needs uh, of, of uh, all the members of the society. Um, youth participation also uh, uh, can develop important skills and competencies that are essential for the success uh, in, in, in uh, adulthood. So uh, this is also something very, very important and is uh, actually critical for uh, promoting social justice and addressing issues of inequality because uh, everyone participates. So uh, there is a sense of equality and equal treatment. So young people are often at the forefront of social movements, um, as you said also, and um, advocacy efforts. Uh, so their voices and perspectives are essential for creating um, uh, change, political change, uh, let's say. Um, so by engaging uh, youth in decision-making processes, we can ensure that these policies and that these programs are more equitable and responsive to the needs of marginalized communities, of vulnerable social groups, etc. cetera. So, um, it is important, youth participation is important for uh, creating a more just and inclusive uh, society. So, because uh, actually uh, more opportunities are created for the young people to take an active role uh, for their future. So uh, here we have some different kinds of uh, participation, uh, the traditional and the alternative forms of uh, participation. So uh, the traditional refer to um, the involvement in representative democracy, uh, for example, through voting, um, standing for election, uh, joining a political party or a trade union, as I told you before. Uh, so this form of, of uh, participation is actually based on institutional bodies, um, with democratically elected hierarchical uh, structures and formal processes. So it could be, uh, let's say, supported that that uh, involvement uh, in, in, in a youth participation uh, representative uh, body, uh, such as uh, youth council, for example, 
or a youth-led uh, NGO uh, as a traditional form of participation. Uh, we have also the alternative forms, which actually is any form of participation other than traditional form. So uh, there are new ways of participating uh, um, that can always be created or developed uh, to provide an alternative approach um, on what's uh, already in practice. So campaigning or youth activism based on uh, issues um, that uh, people want to express uh, and um, youth want to um, uh, support participation with which ut utilizes digital tools, for example, and digital spaces, innovative approaches involving young people in policy making or implementation, for example, co-production, um, deliberative democracy methods, youth activism, uh, etc. So we have different kinds. So let's uh, say a few words about the definition of youth participation in democratic life. You said that this is a, a, um, very important for democracy. So we have individual young people and groups of young people having the right, the means, and the space, uh, the opportunity, uh, and well, the, the support if necessary to freely express their views, contribute to and influence societal decision making on matters affecting uh, them and the broader society and be active within um, the democratic and civic life in our communities. So this is actually uh, what, what we say um, participation, youth participation. Now the question is, what is civil society? Because we said that participation, youth participation and participation in general could um, uh, increase the impact of the civil society in, in, in uh, uh, whatever we do in our lives. So civil society is an essential element of democratic societies. Well, actually, uh, its, its role, it's very, very important in promoting the values of democracy and human rights because we all participate in civil society. So, uh, well, civil society refers to associations, organizations, and groups that exist between the government and the private sector. So, uh, well, here we can say that this is a space where people can come together um, voluntarily, because this is very important. It's a, a voluntary participation uh, in order to uh, pursue common interests, objectives, values, etc. So here we have civil society organizations, uh, formal and informal, and they can include trade unions, faith-based organizations, non-governmental organizations with different topics, for example, think tanks, community-based organizations, etc. So uh, civil society is, is actually um, made up of various components. It includes uh, citizen participation. Civil society provides uh, a way for citizens to participate in the decision-making process of their country or in, in Europe, for example, in general. Uh, it allows citizens to engage in discussions and debates, make their voices heard, and influence policy decisions. Also, it increases social capital. And here we have to explain what is social capital. Social capital is, what well, we say, all the connections between the different groups, the networks, and the connection between the different social groups. Uh, so civil society fosters um, social capital by promoting trust, reciprocity, and cooperation among individuals and groups. So this actually helps to build 
strong communities and promote social cohesion. And also, civil society is connected with advocacy and activism. Civil society organizations advocate for the rights of uh, the marginalized and the vulnerable groups, as I told you also, and uh, hold governments and other actors accountable for their actions. So they also engage in activism to push social and political change. So uh, while civil society plays a crucial role in promoting, as we said, democracy, human rights, human justice, it promotes, promotes citizens' participation. So this is actually the promotion of a platform for citizens to participate in the decision-making processes in their countries and uh, uh, internationally, maybe. It promotes, uh, promotes accountability. So civil society organizations hold governments and other actors accountable for their actions. So they monitor the actions of governments, advocate for transparency and accountability, expose corruption and human rights violation and promotes social justice. So civil society organizations advocate for the rights of the people who have different problems and they work to promote this social justice and this equality. Uh, it also provides essential uh, services uh, because organizations and the civil society in general provide uh, services to communities. Uh, sometimes these services are uh, neglected by governments and uh, this could be in the sectors of uh, healthcare, education, social support uh, for, for uh, people who have different problems. So we can say that this is essential for all these reasons for uh, democratic, for uh, uh, our democratic societies. So how, the question is how youth participation could empower civil society. So youth participation is a very, very important aspect of uh, civil society. So the young people, uh, the youth in general, are uh, uh, in, an, an important demographic uh, and an important uh, social group for any society. So their active involvement uh, can lead to vibrant, inclusive and a democratic uh, society. Uh, so, what could youth participation bring? New perspectives and ideas. So, uh, they have uh, the young people have fresh ideas, fresh perspectives, and uh, innovative ideas uh, that could offer to the uh, civil society. Uh, so, they have they have a unique perspectives on different issues. Their involve involvement could lead. Uh, to the development of new strategies, of uh, uh, new solutions. Uh, we, we said about the social capital, it could uh, build social capital, it could mobilize communities uh, to take actions on specific issues that affect everyone. Youth-led campaigns, for example, initiatives, initiatives which are also very important in order to bring also political uh, change and promotes inclusivity, uh, as, as we said. At the same time, if you participate in such activities, such actions, in all of these procedures, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the leadership skills could be developed further. So youth participation can develop uh, leadership skills in young people. Uh, because they have the opportunities um, to uh, improve their decision-making skills and uh, prepare themselves for future leadership roles. Uh, so what are the challenges? First of all, uh, there are sometimes limited uh, access to resources. Uh, so young people may face barriers in accessing some resources such as funding, training, 
and uh, this could limit their ability to participate in civil society. So there, the, uh, the connection, the networking, the um, knowledge about opportunities um, is, is very important. They may have limited opportunities, for example, uh, to participate in decision-making processes and activities that act, uh, uh, affect their lives. And sometimes there is a lack of recognitions, recognition, which, um, I mean, uh, the, the governments and, uh, uh, I mean, people who are uh, in, in the policy-making processes may not recognize and value uh, their, their participation. This happens sometimes, and especially in, in some specific countries, for example, and could create several uh, problems uh, there. So uh, what about youth participation now in, in Europe? Um, so young people, we know that they are increasingly involved in these alternative forms, new forms of participation. So for example, community volunteering, online activism, uh, youth social movements, climate change activism, and etc. There are a lot of other um, topics there. And also, um, there is a transi transition from structure, hierarchical models, as I told you before, of representation to more networked and diverse uh, sectors. And of course, um, here we have some concerns about infringements on freedom and asso of association, assembly, and expression as part of this process of shrinking the space for civil society. There are different examples here from different countries uh, that we have uh, this, this uh, um, phenomenon. For example, in Hungary, uh, you know, we can discuss this if you don't know it. Uh, they, uh, so some, some um, studies categorize countries such as Hungary as the poly poor states where actually the uh, civil society is, is more directed from the government uh, and uh, there, there are infringements on, on freedom uh, and association. We can discuss it if you want uh, that uh, later. And of course, participation, citizenship and voluntarism. Well, here uh, active part, uh, citizenship and uh, uh, voluntarism enforce these ideas of participation and belonging in a society. This sense I told you of belonging in a society um, to, to recognize that I'm a citizen, so I, I offer um, my services or whatever, my opinion to this society. So this is active uh, citizenship which is created by participation, actually. Uh, so active citizenship means that the volunteers uh, can participate also to the decision-making processes of a voluntary association. So it's not this these, um, strict hierarchical uh, structure, but something more inclusive. Also citizenship has to be more than a political and uh, judis, uh, judica, ju juridical status. It also has a social role. So it's not this typical form, as I told you before, of a political party, of a trade union, even of an NGO with this uh, hierarchical st uh, structure. Is something different here, uh, more participatory. And also volunt uh, voluntarism is a method to participate in the civil society and offer your uh, services. So why is that? Because actually the goal is to create uh, a more inclusive society. And uh, we can say here that rooted in, in principles of social justice, inclusive societies afford all individuals and groups regardless of age, gender, sexual orientation, ethnicity, race, ability, religion, immigration status, and socioeconomic status access to and full participation 
in society. So this is exactly what participation does, creates an inclusive society. And it is a procedure which is bottom-up. Well, we have the top-down procedures, but here is a bottom-up procedure. And we cannot achieve this inclusive society if we don't have this bottom-up uh, process. So, uh, well, thank you for your attention. And I think that it is a time now for questions and reflections because I think that it, it is a topic which we can discuss several things uh, about participation. So uh, I want to hear your opinion maybe, um, and so we can discuss the, uh, all this, this issue. So please, I'm, I'm here and Alkinos, we are here to, to hear from you also. Yes, feel free to to speak on the microphone or write in the chat, but microphone is always better. Of course. So uh, let me ask a question, let's say. Uh, have you ever participated in, in uh, a civil society organization, let's say, in activities of the civil society and share your experience because there are different activities here uh, in, in the civil society. So please, you can share your experience with the rest of the group. Anyone, no one has ever participated in, in, in uh, activities of the civil society. Yes, please, Christos. Um, hi. Um, recently, um, there was a destructive uh, earthquake uh, in Syria and Turkey, as we all know. And uh, I am uh, a member in the environmental team uh, uh, at my university. And we managed to collect um, items uh, and goods that uh, can help these people. Uh, that uh, were food, that uh, they were clothes, shoes, um, uh, products, uh, uh, or hygiene products. And that was uh, my most recent experience. Great, thank you very much. This is actually, you offered, as we said before, a service to the society, actually. So here it was a service of, uh, um, let's say in, in, in the level of social protection, for example, because of the uh, people who were in need because of the earthquake. So you, you offered that. So here is like um, a, a, a social service. You, um, you offered in order to help people uh, who were in need, vulnerable people or whatever, everyone who were in need. So thank you very much for uh, for that. Uh, very interesting. Any other participations? Nothing else. Even in traditional forms. Please, Elena. Hello. Um, actually. I'm offering my services for um, sorry, uh, for a published network. Um, so actually, I'm doing peer-to-peer -peer review for the last uh, six years, and uh, I honestly believe that this is a very this is a wonderful experience actually because um, I do have the opportunity to uh, see the contribution, the scientific contribution among uh, different scientific communities uh, regarding social and political scientists, uh, sciences. So that's it from my side. Great, thank you very much. So this is uh, actually uh, uh, exchanging ideas. Um, well, actually, uh, this uh, this has to do. They uh, they do submit their piece of work. Actually, mainly articles and uh, um, participation in um, 
some scientific com committees and uh, different stakeholders and scientists from all over the world, mainly from Europe and the US. Um, we are looking uh, their work and uh, we provide them with uh, feedback uh, on how they could uh, improve uh, their piece of work. That's it. Great, great. Thank you. Very interesting. Any other contributions? Any other participations? Yeah, Christos. Um, I actually have a question. Um, when we talk about civil society uh, and organizations uh, that are uh, that can be understood as civil society, can they have uh, politically charged uh, actions and? Uh, or should, or are they constrained more on the voluntary, uh, more, more, or are they more voluntary groups? Well, when we are talking about civil society, we're talking about um, uh, voluntary organizations. In, in When we are talking about participation, then we can divide it actually to the formal kinds, formal groups of participation, such as the political parties of the trade or the trade unions or uh, the voluntary organization uh, mainly these these organizations may they may have opinions for for all issues i mean if you have opinion for something then you may propose poly, uh, some policies so this is something uh, this is a political process but uh, you are not driven by the political party you should not uh, here is something different. You voluntarily participate and you offer this, uh, your participation uh, in, to the society or the discussion for anything or to propose uh, something uh, or to discuss something or your service or to discuss your about uh, or to uh, give your services to the society. But this is something which is a little bit different. It should not, it's voluntary. It should not be connected with the parties in a strict way, uh, because then, or in, with the government, because then uh, you create something which is totally different. It's not voluntary. It's uh, directed in, in a, to, to a specific direction, actually. So here it's something voluntary, and uh, it's uh, it depends on, on uh, the society itself and the needs of the society uh, for, for action. Uh, so. Uh, this this is exactly something we we should define it and divide it. Uh, so is it is it clear? Yeah, as we said earlier, uh, traditional methods of participating and not traditional. But uh, I asked because uh, even when uh, defining what the society needs, uh, that is a political uh, question and it has a political answer. Yeah, that's why I asked. Yes, as I said, uh, when you propose something, this is a political action. Even if uh, when when you you participate, but this is something different with the government or the parties. This is something different. I mean, in a different level. Uh, so it's the activation of the society. Maybe your opinion will be supported by some parties in the end but this is okay this is something different it's not that it should be driven by the parties for example so this is the the the, the difference here not uh, that it's not a political action by participating you you actually uh, are active politically active so of course yes you are active okay. but in a different thank way you. i i got it now thank you Okay, you're welcome. Any other contributions? Any other questions or any other? Um... Oh, yeah, yeah. We have. Yeah, thank you for this. Uh, would you like to share your opinion with us regarding uh, a voluntary extremists in terms of radicalism who present themselves as vivid members of their communities? Well, uh, if we go to extremism, then it's something uh, totally um, different. I mean, a voluntary extremism uh, that we have uh, 
this this is something that goes to something uh, let's say let's say different uh, here we we are talking about uh, the civil society which is active and wants to to make changes to the society itself and uh, to propose democratically in a with, with with democratic dialogue so if we, we are going to extremism then we don't have democratic dialogue uh, these extremists say that we hold the true the truth uh, so you should do what we want no this is not exactly that yes francesco i just want to uh, talk about you because i still don't have a, a concrete and fulfilled opinion about the what in Italy is called the generation z the z the x generation it's a group um who call themselves kind of could be can be told about uh, extremists uh, you know, radicalists what they do their form of protest is to paint some um, historical monuments with uh, water water watercolors watercolors they get stopped in a few seconds in really few, few seconds as the police is always guarding these monuments and they are just using watercolors. Maybe you heard about sign they painted the Palazzo Vecchio in Florence, or even the Parliament in Italy, or even the Parliament. And they are young, young for me. I mean, they are they are <laughs> people of my age, uh, youngsters and young adults. And what they want, their goal is just to arise awareness about the social and climate problems that are that are connected, of course. And about those, the authorities and the political authorities are making so few. But the problem is that all the people, mostly of the people are saying, yeah, yeah, and they are just, uh, they're just a bunch of, of extremist children who are painting our monuments and many times, they cannot reach the attention, but um, I don't know if they do, if what they do is right. I totally share their aim. I know, I mean, it's important to arise the awareness about those problems. And sometimes some action is needed as till until now, all to all we have done has basically failed. So, uh, can I would like to talk about this and if for you to you to <laughs> really is to paint monuments with watercolor just to raise awareness can be considered an extremist act and can be damned and what can you think about what what do you think about it yeah thanks for the time sorry for if it took too long thank you Francesco uh, well, there are different opinions if this is an extremist uh, uh, act, uh, but it's uh, not really, uh, it's a soft one, let's face it's, it. It's extremism soft. can lead to death. To... No, it's not. If a, a, something uh, which is uh, extremist uh, act is more, I mean, like a, is, if they destroy the monument, I mean, something like that, let's say. So, uh, yeah, it's not like that. Uh, I would say that this is kind of flash mob. Uh, this is a kind of flash mob. We want just very quickly to show to the people uh, uh, the problem and our opinion about that, and that there is a problem here. Uh, so uh, a flash mob could be, uh, let's say, implemented in different ways now they cho they have chosen this one sometimes uh you well th this is their their uh opinion they they chose they have chosen this but you can use different kinds of flash mobs i mean uh, and also you can adjust the flash mobs to the society i mean if there is a danger that the society could perceive this act as something which is not accepted generally then you can do it something different uh yes thank you for the video uh francesco so i don't say i, I i'm not sure this is not an extremist i think uh this is not an extremist uh, um action it's something like let's say something like a kind of 
flash mob, something like that. More uh, extreme, but not. It's clear to me, however, um, these cells and formations are unavoidably part of our society. Uh, even if we have different goals on this basis, I said the aforementioned. Yes, yes, of course, yes, yes. Uh, but I saw some uh, other hands here. Uh, I think Dimitra. No. Before okay, so yes, there are different kinds of actions. I told you about flash mobs. Yes, flash mobs can be used in order to inform the society about about something. Um, the thing is that these are actions to inform and to, to express our, our opinion. There are different activities. For example, uh, we show the activities uh, that offer to the society services. So there are different kinds of activities. Okay. So any other reflection? Francesco, thank you for the link. Oh, it's a pleasure. So any other question, reflection, whatever? So I raised my hand before. Ah, uh, ah okay. okay, okay, Francesco covered, okay. Sorry, Dimitra. I have been some focus groups and some Erasmus Plus youth participation activities during one of the programs we had democratic labs. Yes, that defined public causes where themes and needs assessment priorities were polled democratically. This happened at the same time to four different countries. Yes, democratic labs uh, is, is a tool uh, of uh, participating. Uh, so it's very, very interesting. Thank you, uh, Sofia, for this. So any any other yes, Yanis. Um, it's it's a question similar to the democracy labs. Uh, it just popped into my mind because there is also this uh, whole debate about whether citizen assemblies could be part of uh, modern day policy making. Whether we could somehow uh, make it part of our uh, representative politics somehow. And I'd be interested to know. Is this considered a part of uh, participation first? And second, whether you would say that it is something that we could, um, yes, incorporate into uh, modern politics uh, somehow, either as a part of a representative politics or, uh, or as a, let's say, parallel uh, part? Yes, thank you very much for the question. Yes, it is a part of, uh, it, it is participation, actually. It is participation. So uh, it is connected with participation, it is participation, and we can um, say that this is part of uh, uh, increasing this re representation of the society, of the people, of the citizens. So yes, of course, we can include it in, in, in these actions. And this is also um, a, an activity which um, uh, activates civil society even more uh, so it uh, civil society comes closer to the decision making uh, processes so i think it, it it is it is and it's very very important so any any other questions any other reflections or experiences I can see that, uh, uh, for example, there is the EU uh, youth strategy. I don't know if you know that. Ah, uh, oil protesters. Okay. Uh, thank you for the link. So the EU youth strategy, which is uh, from 2019 to 2027. So it was adopted. I don't know if you know this. It was adopted in 2018. So um, this is connected with engagement, empowerment, uh, connection of the society, of the people, of the citizenship. Um, and it's, it's, it's also 
uh, places uh, youth participation, uh, youth participation right actually, at the forefront of uh, youth policy here. And uh, it has some objectives, for example, um, to foster uh, youth participation in, in the democratic life and support uh, civic engagement in such actions, as you also said. Uh, so it has some specific principles here uh, that, that uh, all policies and activities concerning young people should uphold young people. So young people should uh, participate in, the, in their development um in their implementation and then the follow-up of of these policies uh, that affects uh, uh, them um by actually the means of uh, participation of the young people and the youth organizations etc uh, so christos yes hi um i wanted to ask another question um so we are talking now um, about uh, the just of oil protesters and uh, i have to say their actions are a bit different uh, than uh, other kinds of uh, environmental protesting that are peaceful protesting uh, sit downs and such i have also read a bit of uh, a book uh, it has uh, quite an interesting title it's called how to blow up a pipeline and it's uh, speaks about uh, how um, um, more uh, offensive or viol violent, not to people, but to institutions uh, kind of protesting could uh, bring the results that are needed uh, for uh, us to avoid the climate catastrophe. So my question is, uh, how uh, um, can violence uh, to, not to people, to institutions like machines, or uh, the, the recent snooker game, so to uh, stop something from happening, can be uh, included in civil society? Can it be included at all? Uh, or does it fall uh, under the illegal practices? That's what I'm saying. Can it be accepted? Or should it be accepted? Protest, uh, protesting is a democratic uh, right. Okay, so. Uh, let's begin from that. So, if you protest, you, you you should protest if something, if you uh, disagree with something, if something goes wrong. So, if you think that something goes wrong, and you have the right to do that, okay. So, this is something uh, uh, which is definite, which is a right. If you um, you use violence, then you use something, you use different means. I mean, if we're talking about democratic uh, dialogue here, uh, debate, etc., then you start from that. And then, okay, in the protest, you may use different means, but violence is something that goes to extremism. So, I don't know if you can achieve things there uh, or make it uh, worse. The thing is that you have, first of all, to inform, first of all, to be informed and then to inform the society. So if you go at the first place and use violence to achieve your goal and the civil society in general or the, 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 the majority of the um, citizens do not know what exactly you are protesting of. And uh, then they may be against and they don't know why they are against. So the important here is first of all, to discuss and to inform. So for me, these are the best first steps that the civil society should do. Then, uh, if you use violence uh, while well, you are using other means that goes to the next step, which is something I, I don't know if, if every, every case is different. I don't know if it, it would be accepted on also from the members of the society. 
So for the, the, the first thing is here, democratic dialogue, because we are in a democracy. So first of all, you have to discuss. Uh, for me, this is, this is the, the best, this is the, the most important thing. Of course, to protest, of course. But to yeah, use I'm violence. Talking about violence. I'm not talking about <clears throat> uh, physical violence. I, I mean legal violence, like uh, unscrewing a screw that might, that might uh, render a machine uh, uh, not working. That's what I'm uh, calling. And if, if uh, this uh, violence uh, is legalized because uh, the civil society uh, rent, uh, decides that there is an issue and uh, that traditional forms of protest do not solve that issue, uh, and the violence is without any uh, victims. I don't know if that can yes, be... Yes, uh, it depends on the legal system. <laughs> it depends on the legal yeah. system of every country. I mean, it's different in some countries, different in other countries. The thing is that protest is very important. And for example, in, in different country, uh, countries, I, I, I give you the example of Hungary. Well, the, uh, Hungary, uh, the Hungarian government has created NGOs, which are funded by the government, and they are um, actually pursuing the directions and the opinions of the government to the society in order to have the society controlled as they, as they wish. So there, you have a violation of uh, free expression, for example, and uh, also, they, they try to uh, control the civil society in that way. So the civil society should act against that. The actions that uh, we'll use, because violence is also that, it's indirect violence, let's say, uh, or uh, uh, legal violence or whatever, but it's something different, institutional violence. So then the civil society should act. And sometimes, if um, they have um, used all the means of discussion, of uh, information, of whatever, uh, and they use other means, maybe also of, of uh, protest, maybe also these are important in order to raise the, the awareness. So it depends on the case, it depends on everything. So these are forms also of protest, of course. And sometimes they are necessary because you have direct violation of, of uh, rights in specific cases. So yes, sometimes uh, they, they, they can use also this kind of uh, violence also. And I told you, it's not that the, it's not accepted by the civil society. It's that it's not the first step. I told you the first step uh, should be the, the uh, information, uh, discussion, etc. Yes, I I think uh, that uh, what you said uh, really covered uh, my uh, question. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Any other reflections? I don't know, Alkino, uh, maybe we can go to a short uh, break or whatever. Yeah, we will, if, if we are done with- If there, if there is not any other question, 